Oh, good day. My name is John, and this is another video in a series of videos that I'm doing on these little Chinese diesel air heaters. And the subject of today's video is the fuel delivery system. Okay, so, well, where do we start? Well, first, I guess we can start with the fuel tank itself. Most of the heaters come with a, a little 10 litre fuel tank here, which you can mount almost anywhere and you draw the, the, the diesel off here. Some people like to use a, the vehicle's own fuel tank and if that's the case, generally you will have to get a, um, a separate pickup tube and you'll need something like this. Now you can buy these online, these pickup tubes online. They come bent um, for, for transport, so you just bend this out straight, measure into the tank and then cut it off, I don't know, probably 50 millimetres, two inch above the bottom. So that way you're not sucking um, rubbish up from the bottom of the tank. And also you're not going to suck the tank dry if you do a lot of um, boondocking as you Americans call it, or outback travel as probably we call it. And uh, find that you've sucked the tank dry and you can't start the, tr the, uh, the truck or your, your motorhome. So, where do we go from there? Well, Basically, it's very simple. The fuel comes through. You must go through a fuel filter first. Now, the e Spatcher design actually has a, a fuel filter built into the, um, the bottom of the, the, the fuel pump. But I advise that to throw that away. It is no good. It is such a small surface area. In fact, the surface area is, is actually smaller than the, the end of this rubber here and it will rapidly clog up so the first thing I do is get rid of that and put in a you know a proper fuel filter something like this so you go through the fuel filter then through the fuel pump or the dosing pump like this and then up to the burn chamber of the heater now ideally this here should be a nice upward sloping travel for the fuel and ideally you should have it very close to the same level and not more than about a metre above the level of the tank. So the fuel comes through here, through the, the dosing pump and then into the burn chamber. And this is the burn chamber here. The diesel comes in here and is injected in here through an atomizing screen made out of stainless steel like this. Also in here is a glow plug that looks like that. Now this glow is red hot. So the fuel comes in here, gets atomized in here. The glow plug glows red hot, ignites the fuel, and then the diesel then comes around the outside of the burn chamber and the air comes in through these little slots in here. When the diesel comes through here, on, it comes through a screen, something very similar to this. Now this is just a prop that I've, that I've made up. It here is in the base, in the bottom here, in, in here. So the diesel comes through here, gets atomized by the air coming through here, and then you have like a big flame thrower comes out here. That then goes into the, the chamber in here, and heats up this heat exchanger and then as he blows out the exhaust. Air is blown over the top of the heat exchanger and that's how we get the hot air. Okay, so now we come to the fuel line. Now these heaters are very particular and it is very important that you use the proper fuel line. Now most of them are supplied with a fuel line like this, which is a hard nylon fuel line with a two millimeter bore, a very, very tiny bore. Now, this does a, a number of things. First being hard nylon, you don't have the expansion and contraction of it with the fuel pulsing, and I'll go into that a little bit more later on. The other thing is, is that like all fuel pumps, they are not very good at sucking. They're much better at it blowing. 
Now a normal, a normal motor car fuel pump has a diaphragm, you know, like this. It um, is very good at, at sucking, much better, more so than here. These little, these little fuel pumps have the tiniest little piston in here, so they're they're not good at sucking at all. And if you have a large bore, they can't suck the weight of the diesel. Like all pumps, they are much better at pushing than they are at sucking. And the same is with people. You know, if you put your your um, hand over your mouth, you'll have, you'll have a lot of trouble sucking the air in, but you won't have trouble blowing it out. You can you can blow out much better than you can suck. And the same as these little pumps. The other issue with these is they're nice, smooth, hard bore, so there's very little friction for the diesel or the kerosene, whatever you're using, to run through. Now the problem comes is to when you fill the a fuel filter or when you join into a pump that you you can't join those things like that. So what is supplied with them are normally 50 millimeter long little bits of standard fuel hose, which then you can put in here and then you join like this. Now one thing that's important is that you don't leave air spaces in there. So you must put them two together like that. Now, sometimes it's better to actually measure. So you put this on you, and measure the, um, the fuel hose and you can mark it. All right, so there it goes there. So when we put it in, we know that we've got to push it in to the mark and we know that it goes right in. But generally you can feel it. So when you push, you can feel it go in and it hits the end. So you can just keep pushing, push, 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 push until it hits the end. The reason that you, you must not allow gaps is because if you have a gap, you allow a place for air bubbles. So you've got air bubbles that will come up in here and um, this creates a problem. Now even if it's flat, you'll, you can still have an air bubble. But the main issue, if you've got a bit of a bend, you get the air bubble up in here and it creates real issue. And I'll go into that a little bit later on. Now, sadly, some of these Chinese heaters now are being supplied with this type of fuel hose and it's just not suitable for these heaters. And um, first, the main reason is, is that the bore size is quite, quite large. So, particularly on the suction side. So if, if you've got a suck, now the maximum lift on these is, is one meter. So I've just done this out. So. If you have a one meter of lift, you will have approximately two, two and a half, two point two grams of fuel in here for this heater to lift the weight to lift. But if you go for this sort of fuel, sort of fuel hose, what you've got now is in that same one meter of of maximum lift height, you've got eight point eight grams, which is four times the weight of the diesel that this little pump has got a lift. Now, as I said, it is a very, very tiny little piston in there, and it just does not have the, the suction power to pull that weight of diesel up. If, if you have the filter and the pump down here, then having this type of fuel can actually be an advantage, so there's no problem with it. The problem is, is when you have to try and lift it before it gets into the fuel pump. So if you have it here, then there's no issues with it. But from the, the pressure side or the output side, there does become an issue, and I'll go into that a little bit more in a minute. Okay, so ideally, we have the, the fuel tank, we have the filter and the pump as low as we can down here. And then from the fuel pump up, we have a, a gently ascending fuel line up into the heater itself. Now the reason we have 
an ascending fuel line is because, as I've mentioned in past videos, the nature of the pump. Now it's a little piston running up and down here and it causes cavitation. And when it causes the cavitation, tiny air bubbles are produced and that is quite normal. There is no problem with the cavitation and these little bubbles provided they can track upwards. So the fuel pump must always be mounted in an upwards manner. Probably our ideal um, angle is somewhere around the 45 degrees. It must not be mounted any lower than 15 or 20 degrees, and but you can mount it so anywhere in that sort of angle. But by mounting it upright, the fuel bubbles are allowed to track out. Now, if we use the proper fuel line, this nylon fuel line, then there's no trouble for the fuel bubbles to push, 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 push. Those little tiny bubbles get pushed along the line. If you use this type of fuel line, then because of the, the larger surface area, those little tiny bubbles now are not forced out the fuel line. So you will tend to get bubbles in here that the, the pump cannot push away. The other issue you're going to have with this type of flexible fuel line is the pulsing of it. Now these these little pumps pulse and what happens with a flexible fuel line is if it can move so as it, as it pulses then it acts like a shock absorber. Now one of the problems with these is that um, as I mentioned in a past video is that you must always soft mount this nylon fuel line because the pressure pulses will go through and you get the hull. But if you use this type of flexible soft fuel hose, then that pressure is absorbed. Now that creates a problem in these heaters and it's a bit the same as in a, um, say a, um, a hydraulic steering in a motorboat or a, or a sailing boat. I have seen so much trouble and I've seen so many people try and use a flexible um, high pressure hose in their steering and you always get massive creep in the steering because when you put the steering wheel over, the hydraulic pressure expands the hose and then you get massive creep. The only good hydraulic steering in a boat or anywhere else is you have to use copper pipe, hard solid copper pipe to stop that expansion. And on the flip side, one of the issues that people have, um, and you probably most of you would be aware, is water hammer in the house. So you got copper pipe in the, in the house, and when you turn the tap on and off, you get the pulsing of the pressure. So the, you get that pressure put through the pipe, bang, bang. And the one way they fix that is they'll put an air um, fitting on the side, so that absorbs the pressure of, the, of that um, banging. That is the last thing we want in these heaters. We want that pulsing pressure of the diesel to come out, boom, boom, boom. We don't want the hose absorbing the pressure coming out of the diesel. And I'll show you a bit more in a minute about that. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is um, when you cut the nylon hose. So you've got the nylon hose here. You must never ever use side cutters or, or um, a pair of pliers or something like that because what happens when you cut it with the, the um, side cutters what you do is you squeeze the hose flat now remember it's only two millimeter bore at the, mu at the, the best of times which is you can't even get a matchstick in there so if you squash it flat you're going to create more restrictions than you than you uh, really want in here. So the way to cut it is use a, a sharp knife on a cutting board. So when you cut it that way, you can see it here, a nice clean cut, not this squashed flat sort of cut that you have done with a, a pair of pliers or a, um, a side cutters. A 
Okay, I've made a little bit of a, um, a test rig here with the thick hose in a loop, the hard nylon tube in a loop, and the two outlets. Now, just showing you here again how these little dosing pumps make cavitation bubbles, and that is quite normal. However, the issue comes when you come up here with the large hose. And what it does is it forms a permanent bubble here. Now, when you first think about it, you think that it's probably a much better idea to use this large bore hose rather than have the narrow bore hose with the, the multiple joiners, like here. So you immediately remove 50% um, of areas where you can have leaks. But now we have a problem. These, this hose, now this, actu this hose actually came with this heater. And it has a problem. It's got, it's, in fact, it's got two problems. The first problem is because these little dosing pumps put out cavitation bubbles, the bubbles come up. Now, this here is four to five times. So any given volume, you take an inch or you know 25 millimeters, any given volume of this hose, it is four to times the, the volume of the hose in here. And the little pump does not have the, the, the flow or the volume, it only pumps out 0.02 of a milliliter per stroke to force the bubbles up and over. So the bubble in the top here gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it, the pump doesn't have the volume to force it away and out. So if you have any loop on the delivery side of the pump using one of these, you will have issues. Now what's the problem with the bubble? Well the issue with the bubble in the delivery side is that air is, is um, compressible, it's flexible and it acts like a shock absorber. So when the pump pulses, instead of the, the um, fluid coming out and shooting out the top here, uh, the, the um, bubble absorbs the pressure and we don't get that, um, that pulsing of the thing. Now the other issue with this hose is it's a flexible, it's a flexible, um, no, uh, sorry, a flexible um, vinyl sort of hose, and it also acts like a shock absorber, and it absorbs the pulsing. So what I want to show you now is what it's like coming out the top here. Now I put a little bit, I put a little bit of um, narrow bore tubing because it goes into the narrow bore um, um, burner chamber. So, but just watch this. And watch it coming up the top, and it just dribbles. There's no force or pressure. Now, as soon as you start to get um, carbon built up in the uh, the metering screens, or the atomizing screen, sorry, in your burner chamber, then there's there's no pressure here to, to sort of force the diesel through. Okay, as before, we've got the little cavitation bubbles coming out. But it's easy for the pump to force them over, although you, you want a gently ascending fuel line. If you do have a bit of a loop with the, um, the hard nylon tube, it's not such an issue. Here again, very easy. See the little bubbles coming up over the top and down the other side, no problem at all. Whereas this tube, they collect in the top. Now notice the difference here, so pulsing out, because the, um, the small bore nylon tube, the hard nylon tube, does not absorb the pressure pulses of the, of the little dosing pump. Whereas this one here, it just dribbled out the top. Now, even removing the bubble out, it also just dribbles out the top, and they're both four meters of, of tube. So both of these I've set up as four meters long. All right, I hope that gives you a little bit of um, inclination into the, the reasons why you shouldn't be using this type of um, large bore flexible tube on the delivery side. 
Now you can get away with this on the, the suction side, provided the, the pump doesn't have to lift very high. But on the, the delivery side, you should go back and only use this narrow bore, hard nylon tubing. Okay, just recapping. If you get a fuel line like this, it's fine on the intake side of the heater, uh, sorry, of the, um, the fuel pump. But on the delivery side, you should always go for the, the hard nylon. When you set the system up, put the fuel pump and the filter as close to the fuel tank as you can. Keep the suction 500 millimeters or less and keep the delivery one meter or less. Now the issue, again, you have with these is that the hose is flexible and this pump is a pulse pump. It sends out pulses. So you've got a double whammy when you use this. One is if you have it here like that, you'll get bubbles in here and the bubbles absorb the pressure. So they act like shock absorbers. So when the pressure comes, the, the air being compressible absorbs it. The other thing is the, the flexible um, tube or, or fuel line, it will take the pressure. So as you saw before, both of those were four meters long. So which is the standard that they come in the, um, in the kit. So there was four, mil four meters of this roughly approximately and four meters of this. So after four meters you saw coming out of here, it sort of just dribbled out. Whereas coming out of here, it was still coming out with the pressure. Now why that is important is because when you get here, gets up into the burn chamber, up in here, where you have the atomizing screen. If you have some pressure behind it, the fuel can go through the atomizing screen and be atomized and then burn. Once you get sm uh, small amounts of carbon in here, this here, this dribble, it won't be able to force the fuel through the atomizing screen, so you will have poor um, flame, poor burner, or probably the burner won't even work. Okay, well, um, I hope that gave you a little bit of insight into the, into the fuel delivery and uh, thank you for watching.